today I'm talking to Megan Smith-Harris. Megan is a writer and documentary filmmaker, president and owner of Pie Wacket Productions, an independent film and television company. She's producer and director of Trial by Fire, Lives Reforged, a feature-length documentary celebrating the strength, courage and resilience of inspirational burn survivors, including American war hero and Dancing with the Stars champion J.R. Martinez. It's my pleasure to introduce Megan Smith-Harris. Megan, thanks for coming today. I'm always happy to drink champagne and even happier to see you. <laughs> Tell me about your latest documentary. Well, it's a feature film. It's called Trial by Fire, Lives Reforged. And it's really about the desire, the intense desire we all have to stay alive and mm -hmm. to achieve our dreams. And it's called Trial by Fire because the people I feature have been through a burn injury but lives reforged is very important because it's how they reclaim and reforge their lives after going through that kind of a devastating experience. Right, and for those of us out there who have things to get over or we are reforging our lives or our businesses, is it, are they universal principles that people can... Absolutely, that's yeah. a great, great way of putting it. Uh, I think that all of us face huge challenges in our, in our lives and especially now, I mean, yeah. with the economic downturn mm -hmm. and everything that's going mm -hmm. on, um, people have hardship yeah. and we always think, oh, if that happened to me, I couldn't deal with it or I'd right. fall apart. And, and it's not true. Right. Most of us, the vast majority of us would want to live. We would want to go on and have productive lives, finish school, write that book. Uh, find the love of our life, travel, so, you know, so that kind of thing. So you're not talking about just a little bit of scarring or a mark on a hand. You're talking about massively disfiguring kind of... Right. It's not yeah. this, which I got taking something out of the roasting right. pan out of the oven. Right. It's this. And what most people don't realize about fire is that it can happen to anyone at any time. And we try not to think about it because yeah. it, you know, we know how this feels. And it's out. And you go, yeah. oh my gosh, that over all of me, oh, I don't want to think about it. But the fact is, you know, it does happen to people of all socioeconomic sure. backgrounds. Yeah, because they're accidents. They're accidents. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's important to be fire safe, and, and we do have an educational outreach. But the, the main part of the film is really telling these powerful, compelling stories about these ordinary people who went through a really tragic experience, yeah. and there's an extraordinary outcome. And that was the most interesting thing about making this film the biggest surprise was that most of the people that I talked to said if they could go back and change it all and not have this happen to them, they wouldn't. Really? They said, I don't wow. want to go through the pain again, Yeah. but yeah. it has transformed me as a person uh, in a way that I could never have imagined. Is that about gratitude because they came close to death or? I think that's definitely part of it. You, you, you know, you wake up bandaged from head to toe in the hospital and you're kind yeah. of going, what happened? Yeah. And suddenly it all comes back to you. And then you go, oh my gosh, where do I go from now? You're still the same person inside. Yes. I think it's the fact that you're not defined by how you look. And in this society that we live in, you are defined largely by how so you appear. Much. I mean, every morning when I, you know, I look in the mirror and I count more wrinkles, right. I am defining myself every day when I do that. Yes, and it yeah. can give you a bad day or, you know, I step on the scale and I go, oh my God, it's a terrible day. <laughs> and, and I think I've learned a lot from making this film. I've learned, you know, humility and gratitude and all those other things. And I think anyone seeing this film will be inspired and they will... Um, they'll recognize the hero in themselves. Mm -hmm. So is it a process of separating yourself from your physical identity, of sort of putting that to one side and focusing more on the other things? Is it to do with that? Well, I think it's a journey. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a process, it's a journey. I think at first, you know, most people are devastated. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a terrible thing. Yeah, I sure. don't focus on that part in right. the film. Mm -hmm. I focus on the reforging part and uh, I think you know, like anything in life, you know, there's an acceptance, a period of, of anger and then acceptance. And then, well, what are my dreams? How what are my aspirations? Yes. Right. And let's backtrack just for a second. How did you even get interested in this topic? You know, everybody asked me that. It's a good, you know, like, why would you well, want to make a, a film about that. the hardest yeah. subject in the yeah. world? Um, I always say that, you know, it's, it's like writing. You don't always choose your subjects. Sometimes they just choose you. you Did know? you come across one person and get interested in their story? Is well, that... I came across a picture in a magazine and I opened a People <laughs> magazine and there was a picture of children in a burn camp. And it just 
captivated me. Yeah. And I suddenly, yeah. in that flash, I yeah. had yeah. that feeling of, oh my goodness, these are just kids who have this, and what must it, what must their lives be yeah, like? Yeah, I think that that creative impulse is what writers and what um, anybody in the creative arts in any way gets. You get assaulted. Yes. by something and it won't necessarily assault somebody else the same way but exactly. that's your art when you get taken tell me a bit about the process of writing the stories how would you go about your interview process and then getting the text and then change did you have to change it did you use final draft did you have to you don't need a screenplay format no no, no it's um it's you know Storytelling is storytelling. Mm -hmm. It's just a process. Yeah. And I, you know, I've been an actor, I've been a writer, a producer, a director, uh, and it's all about telling a story. So it goes back to finding really compelling, powerful stories and characters. And um, again, they kind of come to you. Mm -hmm. Finding mm -hmm. the subjects was not hard. Once you reach out and people realize that you uh, have heart and uh, integrity. So what did you say to them when they said, why are you doing this? What did you say in those first contacts? I, I'm trying to remember. It yeah. was so long ago, two years ago. I introduced myself and mm -hmm. I just said, um, I'm making a film about burn survivors okay. and I, I would like to know more about your story if you would be willing to talk to me. Mm. Now, in this day of reality television, right. you know, there are a lot of people who just can't wait to be on TV, yeah. you know, but it wasn't like that. And I actually had, um, uh, Callie Weber, who's featured in the film, uh, who is a young woman who at the time was at Wellesley College, she was very standoffish. Yes, I she can was imagine. very wary. Yeah. Um, she had, as it turned out, many approaches from you know Dr. Phil and Oprah, or had I don't she? know which talk shows, but there were a number of talk shows, oh, wow. and she had declined. Huh. And I, I spent a long time. I spent a long time building trust. And letting, what was she scared of? She didn't want. She didn't want to be to... exploited. You know, there's so many exploitative things on television now, where it's like, you know, they wanted to delve into someone's life and have other people look at you as a science experiment. Right. And I think what um, changed her mind is I always share some of my own personal struggles mm -hmm. in life. Mm -hmm. uh, I let them see my previous work. Mm -hmm. Um, Do you give them any control or say over what you say or how they're presented? Uh, absolutely. What I do is I, I establish the relationship. We talk quite a bit mm -hmm. in pre-interviews. I usually try to meet them before we show up on their doorstep, you right. know, with a camera crew. Sure, yeah. uh, I will try and meet everybody first and do a location scout mm -hmm. so that we're friendly so that when I do show up with the crew, it's like, hi, how yes, are you? you know, yeah. it, as opposed to, hello, nice to meet yes, you. Yeah. And, um, I always say it's just you're just we're just having a conversation. Right. And if there's anything I ask you that you feel uncomfortable about, mm -hmm. you do not have to answer it. Mm -hmm. And did were what was the effect on the people who told their story? Was there one or uh, yes, it's it's very common when you make documentary films, you'll be interviewing someone. I don't think most people are used to being really truly listened to. Mm -hmm. So when you do really love listen to, be to them, to. <laughs> yes, we do. When people are really intensely listening to you, mm. it has a profound effect. And most most of my subjects do cry at some point, and they're surprised. They'll go. I think I would cry if I had to interview yeah. someone who'd been through something so horrendous. I think it would. Be well, I tear up quite yeah. a bit, and in fact, working on the film, I edited over a four month period, and. Um, which it's a very collaborative process, unlike writing, which can be a very lonely yes, yeah. process. Mm -hmm. um, but I, seeing the film, I think I've only seen it once without crying. And I cried a different place every time. Just the pictures, just the images are no, enough. No, not no. It, no, not the pictures. It's, it's different times in the film every time. It's, uh, and different characters. It, it sneaks up on me. No, huh. it's, our, it's kind of our, you know, our own humanity and our yeah. vulnerability more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. And, and you get over that. that.